Godzilla. What is there even left to say about Godzilla? Well, I can say that, uh, Toho, please do not aggressively take down my video. It's uh, fair use. Leave me alone. Godzilla is a worldwide phenomenon. One of the few IPs that bridges the generational gap. A celebrity icon on par with Michael Jackson or Elvis Presley. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't know who Godzilla is. I guess except for, like, these guys. Godzilla's an interesting beast. I mean, the films, not the actual, you know, beast. If you don't like the first Godzilla film you see, there's a good chance that Godzilla's just not for you. If I had to make a recommendation for, like, your first Godzilla film, something that gives you a general idea of what pretty much all the movies are like, I would have to say Godzilla vs. the Astro Monster is a really good first choice. And if you don't like that one, you're probably not gonna like any of them. Personally, I love it all. Except for the one where there is no actual Godzilla and the whole movie takes place in a child's imagination. And it's scathing commentary on the state of Japan's economy and its impact on the family structure. Yeah, I don't like that one. I don't recommend you watch it. I don't know anyone that's just like a passive Godzilla fan. You either don't like Godzilla or you fucking really like Godzilla. Unless, of course, you're specifically a fan of Godzilla through the games. I know people who don't even watch Godzilla films, but they'll speak highly of the Godzilla Destroy All Monsters game. But come on, everybody knows about Destroy All Monsters. I did. The trilogy of Godzilla Smash and Slam games really are the golden age of Godzilla Vidya. These games are simply phenomenal, and they only got better with each iteration. Then they stopped being made. And there probably won't be another one, despite the reinvigoration in the public's interest in Godzilla. But those are still too modern, too 3D, too many polygons, it runs on, what, an Xbox? A PlayStation? How many bits is that? 720? Yeah, that's a bit excessive, don't you think? Let's reel it into something a little bit more manageable. Let's start with... 8. Godzilla, Monster of Monsters. Or I guess... Gods, Monster of Monsters. Who designed it this way, an idiot? In... 20 XDXX AD The Earth Receive Who designed it this way? An idiot? Ooh, I actually like the looks of this. We get control of Mothra and Godzilla, excellent choices, and move them around the stage. Each space represents a short side-scroller segment. I like this. A lot. It's a very cool format that I feel like I've only ever seen once before. There was another game similar to this called Wrath Unleashed. I played the shit out of Wrath Unleashed. It's essentially the same idea, but without the side-scroller segments and just the monster fighting. In my opinion, there are not enough games like this. Man, I should fucking play some Wrath Unleashed, dang. I pick Mothra first, because getting to play as Mothra is always a treat. Yeah, Mothra fucking sucks. Each time you get hit as Mothra, you get tossed to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. She only has two attacks, shooting this little boopalbop and dropping wing slivers. Mothra fucking sucks. You can't even fly high enough to actually use the wing drop attack. It's completely worthless. All right, first fight, Gazora. Gazora is a weird choice for a first monster. He's not even a Godzilla monster, only appearing in the Japanese kaiju movie Space Amoeba. So, uh, why is he here? Well, he's here to piss me off. That's why he's here. If he touches you with his gay little tentacles, this happens. Wow, that doesn't even do damage to you. Why the fuck is he doing it? Otherwise, Gazora is a very simple fight, and it's over. What? As it turns out, you only get a small amount of time to fight each monster. I guess that's why Gizora has a damageless stun lock attack. It just exists to waste your time. The next monster is Mogira. Mogira. Maybe it's Mogira? Mogira. A weird C-list Godzilla monster, first appearing in another non-Godzilla film, The Mysterians. He looks like absolute dog shit in The Mysterians. His updated look for Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is significantly better. So, the first two monsters you see in this game are actually not Godzilla originals. How bizarre. Also, you can just permanently stunlock Mogira, Lamau. Playing as Godzilla also sucks. It doesn't suck as much as Mothra, but it still sucks. He scoots along the ground on his butt cheeks and kicks and punches rocks. Every little thing on Earth is here to get in Godzilla's way. But damn, he roasts the enemy monsters. This game is terrible and annoying in a way that's pleasing to me. I think the sprite art is very nice and the game controls fine. The things you do with those controls are a touch tedious, but the monster fights are just good enough to keep me invested. Huh, Mogira and Gizora again. And uh, I don't know who that is. 
Oh, it's Varen. Another guest appearance. When am I going to start seeing Godzilla monsters? Uh, what's knocking me back right now? Holy shit, the volcano. The volcano in the background is hitting me. Who designed it this way? An idiot? Just let Mothra die immediately. She's dead weight anyways. What? What? What was that? What is this? It's so fucking powerful. It can kill Godzilla just by touching him. Good thing I let Mothra die on purpose. Ah, I'm so stupid. Hey, we are rewarded. We are rewarded. It's Hedera. Hedera is here. Hedera kicks ass. <laughs> Fuck. Godzilla died to the ultimate life form. Small fireball. Now I have to use Mothra to beat the rest of the board. If you sit in this little spot with Mothra, Hedera simply cannot hurt you. Unfortunately, I am Mothra, so Hedera decides this endless battle of attrition simply isn't worth it and fucks off. Alright, next board. Uh, wait a sec. Run? Oh, what the fuck?! Go, Mother, go. Holy shit, Mother, run. Ah, fuck! Well, that certainly was strange. Anyways. What was what? What was what? What do you mean, what was what? What was that? Butler, what the fuck are you talking about? I just fought Hedera and moved on to the next board. But I... I just... Butler, Butler, Butler. I'm gaslighting you. Oh, you dick. What you just saw was a fan game based on the Godzilla Creepypasta based on the NES Godzilla game. The Godzilla NES game Creepypasta is pretty famous, but if you haven't read it, just Google Godzilla Creepypasta and you'll find it. I apologize in advance for how shitty the ending is. The project's most recent playable version is about two years old, so you can only play it up until the first encounter with Red. But I recommend giving it a whirl because it's actually really fun. Their YouTube channel shows that the game is still in development and it has a lot of things being added behind the scenes. I guess now we're just waiting for the full version to release, so you know. Go let them know that we're still waiting for it. You can find it on Game Jolt, created by Alone Works. I'll put a link to it in the description. Take our eight and make it a double. It's time for the 16-bit era. Godzilla on NES? It's pretty good. It's rough and a little tedious at times, but it's a good foundation, very solid. I'm excited to see how the generational jump upgraded the gameplay. <laughs> I'm fucking yanking you, this game sucks. The real gameplay takes place down in this box, you know, down here, and Godzilla's up here, he's just for show. Just to remind you that you are in fact playing a Godzilla game. Running into obstacles damages you, and running into blue dots heals you. Find the enemy monster and enter the battle scene. Now, how would you do the monster battles in a Godzilla Super Nintendo game? I'm genuinely asking, pause the video, answer in the comments. How would you do the fighting in a Godzilla Super Nintendo game? I, I, I want to know. The way they were done in the NES game was pretty good. Like a really rudimentary fighting game. So honestly, I would have just done the same thing as the NES. I would have just had it be a rudimentary fighting game like the NES game. Why fix it if it ain't broken? Instead, I shit you not, you have to run up to your opponent, give them a little bop, just a little bonk, a little boop on the snoot. Then you have to run away to increase your quote unquote fighting spirit. And while this happens, the game randomly cycles through attacks. Land on the appropriate attack and watch a brief cutscene of the monsters fighting. I genuinely can't imagine a world where this idea was preferable to just making it a, an extremely bare bones fighting game. The second stage has you chasing a UFO around, which takes fucking forever, and it's insanely boring. I swear, slogging through the side-scrolling stages on the NES was less tedious than this. At least, at least I was doing something. You finally find the UFO, which just decides to fuck off where I can't hit it, and I have to sit here with my thumb up my ass until the game decides that it wants to play with me. Destroy the UFO, and then you get to go fight Mechagodzilla. Neat, I guess. Woo, he's been packing away those Mecha-ho-hos, though. My boy has gotten real chonky. I can't beat Mechagodzilla. 
I just can't. He Shao Kahn shoulder checks me every time I try to walk forward to boop the snoot. And you can only damage him with physical attacks, so if you do get a hit in, and then you accidentally roll the beam, you're just shit out of luck. Every time he shoulder checks you, you take some damage. I used all of the healing items I had found in the overworld, and I still wasn't able to win. I have been trying for over an hour, and you know... I think Mechagodzilla here is trying to tell me something. I think he's trying to get me to move on. I think he's trying to get me to play something else. And you know what, Mechagodzilla? I think you're right. I think I've gotten everything I'm going to get out of this. The real Godzilla SNES game only released in Japan. And, like you might have expected, it was a fighting game. Supposedly, the game was slated for release in the States in April of 1995, but it just wasn't. I have no idea why not. Nobody else seems to either. An issue of Nintendo Power mentioned the game, but after April came and went with no Godzilla game releasing, Nintendo and Toho just never mentioned the game ever again. The fuck happened? That's right, baby. It's time for 32-bit. I feel like 32-bit games get left out of the bit discussion a lot. It goes 8, 16, and then they jump to 64. For your 32-bit pleasure, we have Godzilla on the Turbo Duo. Now I know what you're thinking. The Turbo Duo? You're making shit up. The Turbo Duo was a fourth generation video game console and is the North American counterpart to the Japanese PC Engine Duo. The Turbo Duo is the unholy union of the TurboGrafx-16 and its add-on, the TurboGrafx-CD, combined to create a single console with improved hardware. I guess it had more RAM or something. The Turbo Duo released in the States at a whopping $300. Whopping $300 is nothing for a video game console. PlayStation 5 costs $500. Yes, but this was in 1992, Butler. Adjusted for inflation, the Turbo Duo cost roughly $638. Plus tip, that means the console would run you almost $700 fucking dollars. And that's before you bought games or extra controllers. To put that in perspective, the Super Nintendo came out only a year prior at $200, or roughly $400 today, and was from a well-known brand. So imagine if you will, it is 1992, and you've got to decide which video game console to buy. Do you buy the Super Nintendo, or spend the extra $300 to buy some random shit? Especially if you were a parent, your kid's asking for Sonic the Hedgehog, or Super Mario, and what is it, what, what? What was the Turbo Duo's killer app? I couldn't even tell you. I actually can't find any sales data on the games for the Turbo Duo, Turbo Graphics, or PC Engine. If you had a PC Engine in Japan, you were probably using it for the fuckload of visual novels on the system, or just playing Rondo of Blood over and over. If you had a Turbo Graphics, you were playing... Uh... Legendary Axe, maybe? A lot of the PC Engine games ended up never coming over to Turbo Graphics, meaning it had a pretty limited library. And of those games, apparently Turbo Graphics games were pretty hard to come by. Supposedly they were sold primarily at Toys R Us. Most retailers didn't carry them. So you've got a game console that's almost double the price of the best-selling console of the generation with no killer app on par with Mario or Sonic. It doesn't have very many games for it, and the games it does have, you couldn't just pick them up at any video game store. You had to go to specific stores and hope that they had them in stock. Living through the 90s and the 2000s, I never met a single person that had a turbografx system of any kind. There is a Homestar Runner cartoon where Strongbad says, What? They don't got no turbografx games? And I shit you not, I thought TurboGrafx was something the brothers chaps made up. I thought it was fake. Anyways, uh, TurboGrafx Godzilla. Something you'll notice pretty much immediately is the sound quality is fucking spectacular. It sure as shit doesn't sound like a retro video game console. That was the advantage of having CD-based games. Your sound quality could be just terrific. Hold on. Hold, wait, hold on.
This game might be bullshit. Why can King Ghidorah shoot me from across the screen, but my atomic breath is as short as my tail? What, what gives? I am trying as hard as I can, and I can't beat the first enemy. What a dick. Ah, damn it. You know, I gotta say, I'm complaining. But this might be the best retro Godzilla game. It might be one of the best Godzilla games, just period. My issue is, I need to figure out how to play it. It looks like I'll be needing... The manual. That's right, the manual. The young people today, they don't know about the manual. Games nowadays have tutorials and in-game menus and YouTube videos and all that nonsense. Back in the good old days, every game came with a paper manual. This gave you not only the game's story, but also controls and warnings about how the game will adversely impact your health. Also, ads. For fighting games, you absolutely had to have the manual, because without it, you didn't know what the fuck to do. You knew basic things, like quarter circle forward was probably gonna be something, and maybe back forward attack was also probably something, but this? Some of this shit I never would have thought of. If atomic breath on the ground was quarter circle forward, why is atomic breath in the air not quarter circle forward while jumping? That's why you need the manual. Also, apparently I have two different versions of my atomic breath. I've just been accidentally only using the short range version. That's why you need the manual. Fortunately, most game manuals are freely available online. Some pretty fucking cool people make it their goal to preserve these relics of history. And for that, I thank you. Because without you, how would I have known that to make Godzilla go scree -honk, you have to push up, back, down, forward, up. Maybe the PC Engine could have used more than two fucking face buttons. Oh, damn, there are six final bosses. But I only get to fight the Super X2 because I was so balls at the game that I continued more times than I won. The Super X2 is not a conventional fighting game boss fight. Usually it's a big monster man or an angry muscle dude that totally trashes you. The Super X2 almost feels like a punishment for doing so poorly at the game. He's tiny and he flies around and reflects your atomic breath, so you just jump and swat at him like a bug. Try hard level? I didn't even get to see the other final boss monsters because I was so shit at the game. You want me to try hard level? Fuck you, you try hard level. Bruh, the Super X2 is a playable character in the versus mode. What kind of dickhead would pick the Super X2 and just zip around the stage like an asshole? Me, he's me, I would. You can't play as other monsters in the single player mode, and you can't play versus mode against bots, so without a second player, I can't see what it's like to play as the other monsters. Cool game design, dicks. I want to see all the monsters. I have to. This game is fun. Play it on hard, eh? I'll do it. I'll beat this shit. Every monster, no losses. It's fucking gamer time. I did it. I fucking did it. I beat every monster on hard. I didn't die a single time. All right, let's see who... Ooh-wee. You're kidding. Getting a perfect win streak was not good enough to unlock even the second boss. And look, four of the versus mode monsters are locked behind those final bosses like Super X2 was. What does it want me to do? Do I have to win every match without continuing and do it without taking any damage? Would that even be good enough? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. Fun fact, to unlock Super Mecha Godzilla, you have to get perfect bonuses on five of the matches. That means winning extremely quickly without taking any damage. Fucking bananas. I have no idea how you're supposed to do that. Fortunately for us, this is an old video game, so we can just use a cheat code to unlock the characters. But for this cheat code, you have to hold right, up, select, and start on controller 2. And down, left, and 2 on controller 1. How many fucking hands do you think I have? Hey, get over here and help me enter this cheat code. I don't wanna play Godzilla. What the? Overall, I gotta say, Godzilla on Turbo Duo is pretty solid. I would put it almost on par with the Destroy All Monsters trilogy even. I'd even go as far as to say that which of these is better might come down to personal preference. And now we move forward onto the 64-bit era. What's up? Not much, man. What's up with you? No, I mean, what's happening right now? Nothing. What? 
Yeah, there weren't any Godzilla games for any 64-bit consoles. Godzilla just totally skipped that generation, I guess. So instead of 64-bit, we'll end our Godzilla adventure with a 128-bit Godzilla game. Godzilla Generations on Sega Dreamcast. I bet you didn't know the Sega Dreamcast was 128-bit. Now you know. What is a bit, you might be asking? And how did the Dreamcast have 128 of them? Anyways, Godzilla Generations was a Japanese exclusive game for the Dreamcast that, uh... I mean, it, it looks like this. And it... I mean, it's fun, I guess. You slowly go lump around and destroy buildings, because that's what Godzilla did, right? Well, guess what, bitch? That's all you do in this game. And the music's just the same looping track of the Godzilla March, and it doesn't even loop properly. What is this shit? Apparently, this game was a launch title for the Dreamcast in Japan, and it fucking bombed. So they made another one. Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact. Why'd they do this? Maximum Impact is an on-rails shooter for some reason. Godzilla's face is all fucked up and he walks like he's got hip problems. Your only attack is the fucking atomic breath, and while you charge it up, his spines don't even glow, and it doesn't even make the right noise. The one fucking thing you do in this game, and they messed it up. A pretty sorry conclusion for the Godzilla 1990s outings, I gotta say. Growing up in the 90s, you probably thought that Godzilla games kinda sucked, because, let's face it, yeah, they kinda did. There were other Godzilla games I didn't mention, like the Game Boy game or Godzilla 2 for the NES, which is like a strategic operations sim where you play as the military and it looks like this. I mean, just look at it. I wouldn't even be able to blame you. The best Godzilla games of that era either didn't release in the US at all or on a system so obscure that Homestar Runner makes jokes about it. Most people were not going over to their friend's house to play Turbo Duo on Friday nights. Hey, Butler. What's up, dude? You wanna get your ass kicked at Battle Legends? You're like, I'm a super then I hope you know the mirror match, dickbag. <laughs>